Three, two. What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the greatest podcast you've never heard of. I think they're going to start hearing about it now, mate, because what yeah. a guest. Yeah, I was going to say MC Podcast in 117. I'll well, Paddy Barnes on the show. <laughs> <laughs> he, keep, he keeps trying to do all these, just introduce the people. But Paddy Barnes on the show, a fucking Belfast legend. Um, and we talked a lot about boxing. We covered a load of different stuff. Everything is so fucking, so easy to talk to. So humble. He's the, this is the type of person that I want to sit down with. Yeah. Like, because obviously you can... He wouldn't give us his home address. Though. He wouldn't. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I tried to find him. You let me I in. Don't know. I don't know. We'll follow like, up on that. But this is the this is the kind of conversation that you want to sit down with someone because you could have chatted the party for fucking hours. To be fair, yeah. And he told us a, a good insight into boxing and the difference between amateur boxing and professional boxing. He said yeah. it isn't like a stepping stone. Like people yeah. are amateur, people are professional. That's the difference. You yeah. know what I mean? And we he also answers the question that is he the group the most successful Irish amateur boxer of all time? Mm-hmm. Peek out, listen. But yeah, no, it was great. Um, we obviously done it a bit later at night, so we didn't want to keep them too long. So it's only four hours long. If you, <laughs> um, if you want to stick with that, no, it was a fuck, it was a really really good interview podcast. Good chat. chat. He's a good yeah. lad. So hope you enjoy. Buddy, how's it going, mate? All good, lads. How are you keeping anyway? Yeah, we're good. Thanks for coming on the podcast. It's, a, it's great to talk to you. No problem at all. As, as you know as well, I have my own podcast too. There you go. Okay. Sorry, go I'm ahead. The corner you're on, so... I was going to say, like, yeah, I was going like, to jump, jump right into the podcast because like, obviously you're a really successful amateur boxer. You became professional, but now you're doing podcasting. Like, What got you into that? Well... I was at a social media course and the guard said to me like mm-hmm. how simple it is to like record people and, and, and like, do a, a podcast, like basically have a tripod and an iPhone and do do whatever you want. You know, it's so simple and I thought like, you know, I've loads of contact in sport, so why don't the do then contact and you know, uh I dream a plan of and my wife has helped me too, um, of questions in a kind of format. Yeah. Um, I've used that format ever since and you know everyone seems to be interested in it and I've had a lot of listeners in it and on the show so see you're you're the big advantage and when you think about us because you've been doing this for a wee while now but yeah like you are actually someone <laughs> <laughs> whereas we're just fellas that have started a podcast and you're someone too yeah, yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> so like you you've got a reach you can get people on whereas we're like we're digging and digging it's probably hard for you to get like see the kind of guests i've got like yeah no one would get them because, like, because I know who I am. Though I'm a sports person, mm-hmm. you know, I'm doing from like, like you are just from your your, your bedroom, whatever, and you're from the kitchen. Like, mm-hmm. if a company goes to a sports star, obviously be looking for FD. So they don't understand like, I and that a business and that and just who I am. Yeah. Yeah. No, what's over? So they understand that and will come on my show. Although like, if you post them, they'll think like, oh, they're 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 company, whatever, and. I'd be expecting a fee, but for yeah, me, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for us, we're trying to get like because we've been doing this for a while, and a large part of it is just us talking and just us giving our opinion on sports on, on anything really. But yeah. we're starting to get a couple of people coming on now and trying to build it that way. And I think for us, maybe to focus on getting local people on, yeah, like we're not going to go like I know you have Tony Bellio on, I don't think he's going to come on our channel, <laughs> just yet, you know what I mean? So I think that's what we're doing. We're like, We've got yeah. a couple of people on recently. We've got yourself, and then we're going to maybe reach out to local businesses, maybe a, a local gym, a local comic book shop, yeah. get them on, and start just building your channel up that way. But how are you finding doing the podcasts? I, I at, at the start, you know, as you can probably tell, like the way I talk, I talk so fast, mm-hmm. um, and because I'm I'm talking to people from different countries, I try my best to slow myself down just so people can understand me more. But sometimes I just get too excited and it's yeah, it's hard. Really it's, no, it's no problem for us because I think like you live right in the corner for me growing yeah. up, so I think like you they wouldn't like we can understand you perfectly. But then sometimes we're always really worried about that. Like that was the biggest thing for me, Potty, as well, getting into podcasting because my biggest thing I'm worried about is my speech, and I feel like I'm my brothers always tell me like I can't understand what you're saying. You're mumbling your words, so. 
on, on that when we when i suggested to Stephen about getting in the podcast and do it like that was my biggest worry and to be fair, that's by why we didn't really reach out to many people because we were so so self-conscious and how we sound and all to and who really wants to listen but then you realize there is people listening somewhere mm, two or know? three <laughs> by, by doing this it, it does give you some sort of confidence too for speaking to people no it yeah, does 100% yeah I feel a bit more I feel better talking to people now as you said probably different when you're talking to people from like different countries and over in England and all too when you're speaking to local fellas like we had Jerry Carl on last week from people before profit and you felt like you can just be yourself be relaxed and yep. just chat shit because he can hit, understand what you're saying and he just like a lot of laugh from West Belfast so he mm-hmm. would understand anything really like exactly so you'll be doing a, the podcast now uh podcast for is it four months five months now yeah you know what I forgot to say, see, the, the, the initial podcast was going to be about um, just Irish Olympians. Mm-hmm. But after Carl Fromm was the first one, and then I done Joe Gormley, and then I said, you know what? I'm going to reach out to the people who I follow on Twitter, who follow me back, Don and Till, Shane Laurie. And it's just kind of snowballed from there, you know, I think, because other big guests seen this, says, you know what? There's a bit of. Um, I don't know the word for it, but you know. Yeah, but again, yeah, other like other like, kind of celebrity, quote unquote celebrities, yeah. see another celebrity on it. They go, "Oh, this must be a decent thing. I might do well jump on it." Yeah. They'll, they'll give me a chance and they bite John Hart and all. They'll, they'll, they'll come on and it's from there on in. I feel, <laughs> I feel under pressure to get bigger guests every. Uh, but I just think, just so you know, mate, because we've got you on, we're gonna promote the shit out of this. <laughs> so we are. I'll be like, here, but Paddy Barnes, come on, you know what I come on. Chris, Chris Allen Alden, we have Chrissy, Chris Allen, we have Paddy on, come on, come on. Our uh, but you know what I mean, you have to do what you have to do. You know? exactly. But like, so, see, so see if like, like, you got, that's like John Hartson, uh, you got like, uh, was it uh, Jonathan Walters, Shane Laurie, Carl Frampton, obviously Carl Frampton, you probably, you, you, you probably know him from boxing and stuff, but all the rest, do you just reach out yourself or did you know did you have friends of a friend who knew him? You know what? See, so I, I, I was sitting, sitting on the phone, blocked, just saying, what? Right? <laughs> I just asked him. But I'll give you a funny story, right? So, Patrick Kigley has agreed to come on, right? No way. But he said, this is, this is, about, this is about two months ago. Uh, so I, need, I, need, I need to get back on him again because he says, Patty, listen, uh, I'll do it for you, no problem. Give me a couple of weeks. The only, only issue right now is uh, my nanny. I've, I've lost my nanny. I say, Jesus, Paddy. Sorry, sorry to hear what you're going like that. You love him <laughs> Because a nanny is like a, someone who, who minds their kids. Oh, oh, oh right. You thought my granny. Oh, and he says, I oh, Paddy, thanks for the message. She did die in 1974. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true. That's what I would have thought, to be fair. Oh, Jesus, it was funny, so it was. Just shows you like how, uh, how well he's doing. He has nannies and shit. I know. So, he is doing that. so you obviously started your podcast during the whole COVID situation and stuff. So obviously you can't have a sit down conversation. Yeah. Do you want to stick at that, or do you have like different? Do you want to move on and kick on from here and maybe sit have a sit down sit down podcast maybe? I don't know. Like I kind of like it the way it is at the minute. Like I think um, we we'll have um, Jay story on soon, hopefully, and his will nice. be. A- Sometimes I think, um, but I kind of thought about the idea of sitting down, but I, I feel more relaxed and yeah, easier at it if it's on Zoom. Yeah, no, it, it's more comfortable, and it may as well stick to may as well stick to what you know now, then maybe expand it and in it over time. Like we we done a hundred episodes before we started doing it, I like guess so. <laughs> <laughs> we actually did. We just had our mates on all the time. I know. Tommy and Edit. I know. So what, I know. My, my, my podcast is only on YouTube. I, I haven't bothered my arse to put it on different platforms. I actually was, was going, going to ask YouTube. you out there because I was checking. Obviously, I was watching on YouTube and we asked her, I'll just check it. No, check out the audio version. But you weren't on anything. Why? Well, just, you just don't want to do it or are you just coming out? Well, I'm just too lazy. I, plus, I don't know how to do it properly. I'm a friend of mine from Newry who does a podcast. Uh, he asked me to do all the graphics now. Um, he does New York City football teams podcast. Um, right. Ollie McKenzie, but he's helped me. And you know, I've asked him to put it on the other formats. He would do it like, but I don't know the whole of it. Like he's helped me too much. It's it's really straightforward. So before we go, like 
before we finish this podcast, I'll we'll tell you how to do it. It's really easy. It's actually far easier than YouTube, I think. You can tell me as well, because I don't have He doesn't thing. know how to do it as well. <laughs> I don't know how to do it myself. So, Paddy, you see, you've had shit ton of guests, and I'll say the, the likes of John Hartson, amazing. Is there anyone like you want to get on? Who's like, who's like the ultimate guest? You know what I mean? I mean, we'll come on it if you want, mate. Yeah, if you really want. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because everybody here wanted are, are, are going to come on, and you know I'm confident they'll get here I want. So I don't really know. Um, yeah. Can I put you on the spot there? I'll okay, I'll ask Stephen first. Stephen, who's your guest? <laughs> Paddy. Paddy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's just Paddy too. Yeah. Who, who would you love to be the target to get on? Do you think? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think I don't know. Depends where if you want to stay in the world of boxing. Do you know what I mean? So you want to get out of that? I want to be diverse. I want to get girls to be able to on. So I want a mixture of girls as well in different sports. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, it, is it sports you want to stick to? Like no film stars or act, no directors? No? I have. I already have like, it's like Julian and a few other um, yeah. actors who already agreed to come on. So oh, happy days. Oh, who you go on? Well, if it, we're going to talk about if it was someone in boxing, Katie Taylor would probably be good. Katie Taylor. Um, She'd be quite interesting to be fair. I, I actually like the idea of speaking to people who are in the same sphere like there's obviously loads of like youtubers loads of people who do po- podcasts like true georgie massive podcasters yeah it, and whenever you speak to someone like that there it's it's different it's a different type of interview because they're doing the same thing that you're doing like you're not they're not an actor they're not a sports star they are a podcaster so i think getting someone like that on is interesting because you you learn from them as well yeah um but i don't know it's a, it's a good question it's a really good question i think it's interesting as well to have someone on and it's not just an an interview it's more of a conversation i think yeah. that's why drew rogan's podcast is so successful because he doesn't interview them it's like he is just a lot of people go to that podcast for him rather than their guests i think that's yeah. what we're trying to do as well people to come back for us rather than come in just for like likes of yourself or let's say jerry carl yeah like my kind of format i have at the start, my first few interviews, like, it was, like, kind of questions, but now I, I'm kind of, like, it's more fluid, so I'm speaking more as if it's a conversation just between two fellas or two, or a fellow and a woman, like, so, um, I feel like as it goes on, as it progresses, I'm getting more comfortable up doing it, and, and it, it's, yeah. it's certainly better, too. I think the way we do it is we'll have, so if we are, if we do, are lucky enough to have someone on, we'll write out questions that we want to ask, but we mightn't necessarily ask them. It just depends how the conversation is going. And if it does dry up a wee bit, we know we've got a question that we can go to and bring up and what have you. But like, we'll rule out questions for yourself, but we might end this podcast and not ask the single one of them. Yeah. Because I feel like it's a better... It's a better... Conversation. Conversation. Like, I, the way we always view this was, we want this podcast to be a similar conversation that Dan and I would have in a bar or at a coffee shop. Rather than, I don't know if people necessarily want to come to us. We're not journalists to be like, tell me about this, this, and this. Yeah, we don't shit. You know, so, I, but in saying that, could you tell me about that? <laughs> <laughs> tell me about that. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, well, we'll get into a wee bit of boxing anyway. Yeah, so, um, yeah, well, which one? You, you wanted to ask about the Kaylee Taylor fight recently? Yes, well, I was going to talk about Paddy himself, first of all. All right. Um, but I'll talk about the Katie Taylor thing. Because he's been so annoyed at this. Right? Well, like, right, this is a hard one because I love Katie Taylor, right? And she's done a lot for the sport, right? But I had a bat on <laughs> whenever she was fighting, right? And as sorry as I said it, I backed against her in the fight, right? I had Pafakin to win by knockout on white, right? And I had Katie Taylor to lose on points, and the return was about 150 quid, right? And I feel, I don't know if I'm biased because I've lost money. I thought Katie Taylor did lose that fight. Um, I thought she lost the first the first time she fought the girl in New York. I thought she lost it. And I think that's why they had the rematch. Because I think Katie probably thought that she was lucky enough to get through with the, the victory. Um, and I thought she fought brilliantly. Like, don't get me wrong, she did. She fought amazingly well. But I just thought that, the, what do you call the girl? I can't pronounce the girl's name that she was fighting. Yeah, um, the volume of punches that woman was throwing was unbelievable. Um, what did you think? What did you make of it? Well, I was in Derry a Sty weekend. I was drinking. Okay. <laughs> and I watched the second fight. And I can see why people may have thought the girl yeah. from Belgium won. Because if, if you're a boxing fan, yeah. it's different to being an actual boxer. How, how are you going to score? So what, what I mean by that is, 
if your watch not fit, you're maybe blinded by yeah, the volume of punches. Yes, and her aggressive, aggressive, aggressive style, right? So it may look as if she's, but Katie was, was slipping, sliding all the punches, blocked them, and they boxed them perfectly. No, Katie, if you watch all Katie's fights, you're expecting to come forward and just throw fries of punches and destroy everyone. She didn't do it in the end two fights because she boxed the, the tactics, and those tactics yeah. were to make her miss. Score simple, simple single shots and get away, and that's all she's done. And, you know, it wasn't a pretty win, but I felt she won by about two rounds. Um, I think it's it. interesting, even in general, like, you see a lot of controversy in the UFC, and you see a lot of controversy in boxing. <laughs> It, do you think it just comes down to how you view boxing? Because you'll see a judge giving a fighter a win five rounds, and you'll see another judge giving a fighter a win by two rounds, or or even that same fighter, another judge will go, he actually lost or she actually lost. Like, why do you think the scoring in boxing is so difficult to get right? It, it, it is a strange one. I know where you're coming from. You know, in boxing, like most sports, to have judges. You know, just. There can be some stinking decisions. Um, it can be down to anything, such as favoritism. Um, I wouldn't go as far, and I wouldn't go as far as saying on the record Braves, but you just never know. Like, and and judges are sitting in different angles of the ring. They can see yeah. like, differently from from someone else. You know, if we're watching TV, we're seeing all angles, whereas the judges may see from one one side of the ring. That's what I was going to say, Paddy. Do you think there's a, a different way they can actually judge it now? Maybe have a, a judge maybe watch it from a TV. Maybe they can see it different angles because I, I'm sure you, I'm, I'm sure you know yourself as actual an actual boxer, and you, I'm sure you know like when you punch someone. But like if a judge doesn't see that from that one angle, he doesn't give it. Yeah, it, it is a strange one, you know. Uh, like what you do here, but it's just the way it is. It's it's, it's not going to change. You know, even amateur boxing, you know, you had like. The point scoring system, which was ridiculous, and then moved on the provision scoring 10 9 system, which is ridiculous. And they're always trying to change these systems to eradicate cheating. But if you want to cheat, regardless of the system, there's always a way around to cheat. Yeah. Um, so I don't really know. I couldn't. I couldn't ask the answer to that question. Yeah. I don't really know why. I guess we obviously are casual boxing fans. And I think one thing we always talk about is it depends sometimes if you're watching the fight, right? And say you're not as knowledgeable as an actual boxer themselves. The commentary team can really influence who you think is winning 100%. that fight. And that's something that we notice. Like there's been times where maybe someone's been aware, they're watching on a different channel. Maybe Dan watches the US version of the boxing and I watch the Ameri- there or the UK and it's maybe it's a Brit fight in American. If you watch it on the UK, the Brit's always going to be winning. If you watch it on the American, it's, just, it's crazy to... To think if a close fight, the people actually commentating for the everyday people watching it on TV can really influence what you think, who you think won. Like, if you take for example, if you watch uh, Matching or Sky Sports, yeah, yeah. Matching players fighting, you're getting beat. They're going to say he's winning. It's just yeah. it's so bad. It's, you know what I mean? it's, it's reckless. Um, but I, I feel like, you know, Fox Dyson, you know, Barry Jones, he, yeah. he, I feel he's very, very honest um, yeah. in his commentary. I do think like, like individual people aren't bad. I think just like the, when the whole Sky Sports, when they want someone to win, when they want AJ to win, mm-hmm. like even going into every fight, every fight that he fights is the biggest fight of the year and stuff. And mm-hmm. I think that obviously they want people to see the best fighter fight regardless. I think, yeah, you're right. And I think with AJ, the reason why it doesn't come up as often as it sometimes could is because he usually knocks the person out. So it's, it's sure. usually never in doubt that yeah, he won true. the fight because yeah. the guys usually land stiff at the other side of the ring. So, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's it's interesting. I do think the commentary has a massive impact. Do, do you think, obviously you've started doing podcasts and stuff, do you think maybe getting into a bit of commentary is something you'd be interested in doing? No. 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 This it's not for it. everyone. There are, there's a lot of boxers who enjoy doing it, even punditry. Um, I know like there's a lot of former boxers going on Sky, going on different platforms. Carl Frampton and Jimmy Conlon, they, 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 they have started to do uh, a lot of like um, punditries themselves with Fox Nation and BT Sports, but it's not for me. Not for you. No. It is, it's also, you, you got to think, you, you forget the box in being a sports star like yourself, Paddy, like it's a short career in it. So you got to start thinking, thinking about things afterwards and stuff and sure, punditry is... And obviously, coaching is the only really two things you can think of off the top of your head where a boxer or a sportsman can go into. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, for me, like, um, 
I've always been aware as a sport, not just boxing, as a short, short, short lived career. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always had my education, always made sure, I thought later on, by the way, that uh, I had something to fall back on. And at the minute now, um, I'm a club development officer for Ulster Boxing, so I'm helping amateur clubs to grow and develop. Yeah. Uh, I actually got that job, I, I interviewed for that job six weeks before my last fight. So, oh, really? Uh, yeah, and I got, got the job, was, I think it was a week later, I phoned up and said, yeah, got a job. So I knew when it was wrong, that was my last fight. Hi, that's the question I really wanted to ask you. It's, I, was, I was going to hold out to the end, but sure, Mitchell, since you brought it up, are your last fight? Because you're only 32 years old, and that's quite young as a boxer. Well, it's not young, but you know what I mean? It's not, it's not old as a boxer. Like, what made you just decide to go, it's not for me anymore? You know what? I tried really hard for the that camp. And that, and that fight, um, I felt in great shape. But one thing I did notice um, in sparring, uh, you know, punch selection, punch speed, everything was there. But my reaction time was very, very slow. So mm-hmm. as a sparring people, it took me maybe a split second or a second slower to get out of the way punches and that there and just be able to keep my reins out there, you know. And you know, like, if, you, if you look at my career, I'm basically jumping in the deep end. I don't want to fight journeyman because... You know, I had a lot yeah. such a long a career. I wanted to go for broke because just the way I wanted to do it. And yeah. I knew then in that camp, you know, that I'm not cut out for, for the elite level of professional boxing because without my reaction time, my speed, you know, at, at such a late weight, that's the best thing to have. And I, I haven't got it. So, you know, you, you get boxers like that who are only kidding themselves and, and, and just fighting on for the sake of being called professional boxer but yeah yeah i had brains i think that's a, it's a real mature way to look at it as well though because yeah i think i know i don't mean to keep arguing back to ufc but i'm a massive ufc <laughs> fan right and dana white would always talk about if you even think if it even pops into your head about retirement you need to retire like you you can't you can't have that in your head while you're preparing for a fight and it's such a dangerous game boxing ufc like you have to, sometimes you have to think what am i doing this for yeah, you know, it's real as a fight. You know, not just boxing. It could, it's, you could, you could say it's been any sport. If you think there's a chance, even a small chance, you're going to lose, lose yeah. something. You know, already in your head, that that doubt's in your head already. So you're already doubting yourself. Hard, hard breaker, small, small. You know, it's 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 not the way that I'll to have in, in high level sport. So, Paddy, you you mentioned there that you didn't think you were cut out for the high level, but you look back at your amateur career. I have have the actual lot of titles here. So you have obviously you're two time All Ireland champion. You were silver at the EU Championships, a gold and a silver at the European Championships, two gold at the Commonwealth Games, and of course the two Olympic bronze medals as well at the Beijing and the London Olympics. Like that's not like that's not like too shabby. Like you know what I mean. Like, and the question I always want to ask you, like I think we're trying to figure out this today, are you the most successful? Irish amateur boxer of all time? But there's an argument you can say yes, but then you can look, you know, I think it's probably between myself and Mick McConnell because Mick McConnell, yeah. has won, uh, as a male, who took every K Taylor achievements, Mick McConnell won world gold, and that's never been, ever been done before, you know. But okay. hitting medals, like, I'm the most successful, but I just want to say because I was trying to figure out. I was, I was on like. Uh, Eric Collin, probably the gold man of the World Championships, you know, which is, which is pretty good. But the sheer volume, the things you've won, like, and over a long period of time as well. Like, obviously, you went to the Olympics in 2016, but like, it's a long time to be an amateur and all, too. So, obviously, what. I, I'm not too shabby on like what's professional age or like what's like an amateur age. Like, why, why did you stick to amateur up until 29 years old? Like, do you just never want to make the jump until professional boxing or? Professional boxing never, I never ever wanted to be a professional boxer. You know, for me, it was always about the Olympic Games. Um, I always wanted to be an Olympic champion. It was always my dream. My dream was never. Oh, really? Never. Mm-hmm. never. If people think like professional boxing is a progression from amateur boxing, that's not the case. It's like two separate it's sports now. Different. It's like Bellator and UFC, two, two separate. Uh, Entities like and they're not similar one bit. It's like pro boxing, damage boxing is like jump racing and flat racing. Yeah. Um, fucking hockey and hurling, they're not the same as sports. Okay, they are combative in the same way, but 
really they aren't the same sports. So I must emphasize that pro boxing is not a progression from amateur boxing. Yeah. But say I I, I say that because as I said before, that the dream is always Olympic gold. And plus, you know, I could probably turn pro. Well, you would like to have thought I could turn pro after the Olympics when I was second bronze, but no promoters ever came to me. Um, no one ever took interest in me. Um, but in 2015, I won the World Series of Boxing. Um, and I think even before that, or the MGM at the time, which is now TK, they had Jimmy Conlon. And they approached me and they said, listen, would you be interested in professional? And I says, yeah, definitely. And I says, only one thing, you know, if I go pro, I want fast track still away, I want a world title. Because, you know, I've quit history as an amateur. Um, and if you look at the scene in Belfast, there's there's a lot of world champions. You've ran Brad Carl Fram, mm-hmm. Brad D. There's loads of world champions in Belfast. So I just don't want to be a world champion and just be the same as Emmons. I want to do something better than Emmons. I want to be unique. I, so I wanted to win a world title in the first 10 fights. So yeah. I just stand alone from everyone. But yeah. I tried and I failed, but close the trial, eh? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. it's interesting because there is a lot of boxers that come from Belfast. You say you, you named a few there, but obviously like Mayo Conlon as well. Like, like obviously you're friends with these people and you get along well. But is there like a fierce competition? Is that the reason why they're so successful and you all were all so, so, so successful? See, it's hard when you say the word. It, it's a competition, you all. It's weird because I, I'm sure people could see that from the outside in, but see because they're like they're some of my best friends. I mm-hmm. love to do well. Like, like when I watch my comment, I be nervous. Like yeah. I go in. You know, sometimes I hear people say, Do you enjoy it there? I, I don't enjoy watching my comment. I don't enjoy watching my problems because they were friends and I just want to see them get out alive and just winning and just going home. You know what I mean? So it's just for me, it's not about like wanting to be better lemons. I just I want because of my friends, them to do the best they can and you know, I'm always supporting them hundred percent. Yeah, and do you mind if us asking about the Olympic Games itself? Like, because for us as spectators, go like watching the sport, it's amazing. And we'll have a couple of drinks, and especially when you were there, it was a big fanfare about you. Everyone's talking about you back home and all. Like, for you, is it enjoyable though? Like, are you stressed out though going into it and like the whole preparation and all? You know what? It's funny. Everyone probably should be stressed out, um, because it's the biggest tournament in the world. You know, mm-hmm. um, but. I think part of my success there, like, I relaxed. I just, me and McCullough and, and before I even met myself, um, I just had the crack going slaying different athletes and just doing it, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, along you know, North Belfast, just being who I am, like, not, not focusing too much on the size of the occasion, just going there and drawing myself and just doing what I do best. And, you know, it, it worked most of the time. And, uh, you know, there was no pressure on me to perform. I didn't put any, any pressure on myself. Um, but always in the back of my head, I always was aiming and was so, so serious on, on fight day about uh, winning. That's what, was, what for us, you were the talk of the town. Like everyone knew that you're boxing. We all watched, we all tuned in to watch you and all too. And everyone I talked to was talking about you. So I always felt like, Jesus, he must have so much fucking pressure on him. Like, because everyone in Belfast is just talking about him and just maybe messes him and all. Did you say that for See, see, you saying that there, it's funny because whole, belt, whole of Ireland can be taught with me. I don't know because I'm in a living village, so we're cocooned from everything outside. Yeah. Everything's not, so we, ha- we haven't a clue what's going on outside. So oh, yeah. pressure, I that's suppose that helps as well. Like, But then I guess some fitters thrive on the pressure, so some people may want to know what's going on out there. Um, you retired last year, Paddy, wasn't it? It's just it's nearly a year now, isn't it, since you retired October, I think it was? Year, year October. Yeah, it's, it's, it's because you haven't been retired that long it's kind of one of those things it's like are you enjoying being retired is it are you missing it it's, it's i guess it's a, probably a question you need to get asked in five to ten years because i don't think being a year retired is really do you know what i mean it's not that much different but do you look back thinking you know with, with sort of fond memories or is it something you miss it's something not really you know because i think because the current climate now the coronavirus is shutting down so I probably wouldn't have fought anyway. But yeah, yeah. to be honest, even now, I feel like I'm just on a break. I don't even feel like I'm retired. I just feel like I'm on a long break. And you still train it? 
I've, I've only recently started back training. Um, yeah. Doing every day, well, every Saturday now. Um, do laps around the water works and gym with a friend in, in his kitchen. He's like a sound and kitchen coach, so they think. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you would you ever go back to it? Do you like do you ever tickle your fan like tickle your fancy going back jump back in the boxing? Well, I, I miss sparring. I love sparring, so that's the only thing I miss. But I'm so glad that I never had to make flyweight again. Yeah, that's the question I want, actually want to ask you, Paddy. I was like, obviously doing a wee bit of research before uh, <laughs> before you came on, and is like an interview you did after the 2016 Olympics in Rio, or you got obviously you were the favourites going in that there. People thought you were going to win gold, and obviously you didn't. And afterwards, you were complaining or talking about your weight and how you struggled to make it not to, and you felt really tired during the fight. Like, did you did you change weight for from like 2012 Olympics to the 2016 Olympics? Not what happened there was, so I qualified a year previous. I qualified the early, I was the earliest boxer in the whole world to qualify for the big games. Really? And I made it with no problem. I, I, I always struggle, always struggle, but that was just kind of a struggle too. But that wasn't an issue. The issue there was I've never in my whole career had a weigh in at 8 a.m. and fight three hours later. I've never done it in my life. So I felt great. Worn up, I felt a bit lethargic. Didn't care because no good shape and I made it with no problem. Thirty seconds in the fight because I, 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 I wasn't properly hydrated. No, no, nothing in me. Just died, just died of death. You know that guy beat me. She never beat me. Yeah, because I actually watched the fight. It was a really close fight. Like it's still a close fight. But if I won that fight, next fight I've been destroyed because I fought at the same time and the guy who had been fighting with Colombian and he's. In your face all the time, it'd have been too strong for me because it'd have been, I'd have been so weak. Yeah, because you actually said that after the fight, you're glad you got beat that round because you would have got embarrassed the next round. Because <laughs> I thought I was so honest. The guy next fight who he'd been 100% of having fight that night, I, I destroyed, but I just uh, I, I wouldn't have the strength to keep him off me. Yeah, well, Paddy, what do you think about we were talking before we went on, we talk sometimes about the weight cutting. Because it is a controversial issue in boxing and UFC and any sort of fighting sport. Do you think Do you think the promoters need to do more? Do you think that's something that they need to look at? Do you think maybe some fighters, they're fighting at weights they shouldn't be at? That's something we look at. Like, we look at, we talk about Conor McGregor and stuff, and you see he walks around at 170, he drops weight and he fights at 145. And you're thinking, should he not just be fighting at 170? Should he not be fighting something closer to his healthier weight? Um, because you see a lot of fighters struggling badly to make weight, and you're thinking these guys have to fight the next day. But that's what it is. Like, I be a death store when, but see you get hydrated and like mm-hmm. fill up. Next day, you feel like a machine again. That's what it is. You can be in your dead. But the reason why people do this for is because they gain every advantage they can. Yeah. So if like if I'm fighting a flyweight struggle, I would struggle for bottom weight too, which is which is a half and heavier. You know what I mean? But if I follow up on them, I'll have people coming down, cutting, yeah, yeah, yeah. heavier. You know yeah. what I mean? But, so that, that's that. But if you're talking about, do you think promoters ain't looking at no? Listen, promoters don't give a fuck about boxers. Promoter, and, and that's fans saying like amateur boxing, pro boxing, so different. So, promoters and boxing, right? They aren't boxing, they aren't sport people. They aren't boxers. They don't make money. Yeah, they they don't all they are is businessmen. Mm-hmm. So as long as you can sell tickets, if you're crap or not, if you're shit, you can sell tickets. They'll give you easy fights to get you with the R so they can make as much money as possible. Yeah. yeah. So, like Daddy Hearn, Frank Warren, all they care about is money, they don't care about no one. Like they, they aren't your friend. You know what I mean? You're 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 a number of them, you're you're a pound in demons. Like yeah. it's always been like that too, isn't it? And people believe like like they would be your friends, they're not your friends there. They don't care about you. They don't care about money. Would you, would you rack? Would you give like if a kid come up now, come up to you and ask you advice about go, joining boxing and stuff, or maybe going professional? Would you, would you tell them to? Or would you tell them to stick at amateur and all to? I would probably encourage them to stay amateur until they get some senior experience, preferably international senior experience. But sometimes they're, they're stay making suit the amateur system. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. If they're a professional, I but I know people who actually curry boxers. You no, know, like there is 
from what I know of a few managers who actually do for a boxers um management team, NTK, they actually have the the boxers best interests at heart. So if I was encouraging any boxers to go professional, I would definitely send them on, on the way of uh NTK. That's the bad thing about boxing these days, and it? it is just a money machine now. Like like you have about thirteen different belts now for each weight. So yeah. the point where like my dad always says like back in his day he used to be able to name all like the the world champions now like everyone you see is a world champion it's just it's so stupid like the wba or wbo have like five champions each but what's the point it's just so silly yeah, yeah and man. Then getting them to fight each other like we just, oh, you just have to look at Christ. you look at the heavyweight division at the minute how long is it taking for fury and joshua to fight whenever we so know they should have fought years ago how long did it take for Wilder to fight like what is going on and we all know they have managers we've got this you have to do that and you're thinking but it's clear that these two are the best guys and it's possible that they'll fight over the hill but it's possible they may not fight because yeah, yeah. let's be honest right so one's with Eddie Hearn one's with Frank Warren so if that type of happen Frank Warren is of BT Sport Eddie Hearn is of the Sky Sport who shows the fight true you know what I mean so uh, that's just gonna, it, could, it comes down to business it goes down to money so who is going to do the fight more importantly who do you think wins that fight Fury by Savage Savage oh yeah. that was quick yeah well I mean, what would you think I, I I don't know I you think AJ I think it, it's going to be I think it'll be a closer fight than people think I don't know I it's funny out of, out of the three fighters out of Wilder AJ and Fury, I actually like Wilder the best because I just thought he was the coolest and he was knocking he boys cool. stiff. And I was like, I think he, he is, is cool. the one that's going to win. But I think it's obvious, even the casual fans, that Fury is a better boxer than all of them. But I think Joshua is clearly a good boxer. Like, he's an Olympic gold medalist. He can definitely box. Like, Joshua is a good boxer, but he's too stiff, rigid, and too textbook for Lisa Fury, who's yeah. very unorthodox. And for the side as well, it, it's it's impossible to get spawn partners out there. I just think like, it would just bamboozle Eddie. He, he would Eddie would have a clue what to do. He'd watch it though. Well, I don't know what Like I'm still a fan, AJ. I, I love AJ. Um, but Fury is just a different kind of face. You know, he, he's a Fury. I think um, my opinions change because Fury's had such a weird career. You know what I mean? Because he was never rated at all until he was rated do you know what I mean it was yeah. like he was a nobody until he was fucking the best fighter in the world and you're thinking hold on a wee second what happened here oh he beat Klitschko amazing and then you're just kind of going and then he went away he obviously had his problems he came back and then he fought nobodies again and then he fought Wilder so he's one of those fighters for a casual fan it's just like I don't know if he's good or not because I'm seeing him fighting yeah. nobodies and he doesn't look that good and then he fights Wilder and he looks amazing I don't know it's, it's a weird one fighters like, it's not happened to all fighters so if you're fitting a journey, man, your performance is not going to be good because you're expected to win. You can't get a fan in your belly. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're fitting the big name, you know, you'll switch on and become more focused and you, you will get the best of yourself. And that's the bad thing about boxing nowadays. It's all about unbeaten records, isn't it? Like, it, it looks more appealing to have, like, Fury fight because Fury hasn't been beaten. Fury fight someone who hasn't beaten. That's why the him and the Wilder fight was so interesting. And him and the AJ fight would have been good and obviously until AJ got beat. So I feel like that's a good thing about UFC. Obviously, going back to UFC again, but everyone fights everyone. No one cares about the unbeaten records. All everyone fights everyone. Just like yeah, if you're the best, you're gonna fight them. I think probably you know better me. There's there's more depth in boxing, so there's a bigger pool to choose from in boxing. There is UFC. And that's probably sure. as well. And plus in UFC, they're all on their one network. Um, and boxing fucking all ten different networks, so it's, you, you never gonna get them all together. Yeah, we, we kind of seen it then one with, with with Mayweather and uh, Pacquiao. Like, how long were we waiting for that fight? Yeah, and then it happened, and Pacquiao was uh, we he wasn't gone, but he was almost gone. You know what I mean? It's kind of like what's that? Sorry, biggest lap down ever. Yeah, yeah and uh, stayed like, all all night. We stayed up night that watch. We did it. Paid the money. Fucking Sixty hell. quid or something. Waste the time that was. That was a nightmare. And because it was, I don't think it was Pacquiao's fault. I think it was Mayweather's fault. To be fair, I don't know. What is your opinion on Mayweather? Sorry. Well, Mayweather is unbelievable. Uh, yeah. No one do it, but he was just too good. He was born like yeah. proper boxing fan. You know, he, he, his skills were just unbelievable. Those time was great. His stats, his was great, but 
at the end of his career, he, he became less exciting. I just thought, but he was still unbelievable. But what did you think of Connor fight them? <laughs> Jacob was a big. Jacob was a big. Like, you were there for it, what did you say? Um, what did you think of him? Do you think he done well? A bit fixed. Yeah. What? If you watch slow motion, right? Maybe our our sorry, we were throwing jobs and, and maybe our like stepping back, he's like smiling, it is just missing by a centimeter. It's just if you know boxing, it's like as if it was nearly near as if it was choreographed. Really? It was definitely fixed. And we're, we're, like, maybe other carried him to the tenth round. What annoyed me about that fight was because I don't know, right? Trice talk is trice talk, right? I've always viewed trice talk as, right, these guys are getting up at fucking five in the morning. They're running, they're fighting, they're training. If they need to trice talk someone to get that motivation to do that, then fucking fire away because you're putting. Trice talking for us? Yeah. Building yeah. Is right? But then I'm just like, the trice talk kind of went in the way where Floyd Mayweather was kind of like, he was slabbering the corner and stuff, and I'm going, right, you're getting into boxing here, so you're probably going to win. But you're standing right in front of this man. He would fucking destroy yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, but kind of, you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. A UFC affair can the boxing ring and yeah. possibly beat a crap boxer. That's possible, yeah. right? But a boxer would never go in the octagon. Yeah. Yeah. They got there a bit of him maybe going in and thinking, oh, fuck, that was no chance. Too many tools. Connor would beat him with his legs and that would be it. Or he would just take, he would just take him down and choke him. I know what's all he's doing. It scares me sometimes that there's people out there that can do that to you. Like, <laughs> anyway, I started training in Fed Academy Ireland there on Saturday, so I was doing a team of course. Yeah. And I've oh. been ch- choked out so many times in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so that Floyd Mayweather fight and Conor McGregor fight, like, it was obviously for like the casual boxing, casual UFC fans, it was really entertaining because it was a spectacle. For you as a boxer, a pure boxing fan, did you did you like it or you, did you think it was a bit too much? Nah, I, I, I have no opinion on it whatsoever. You know, I'm glad the two fellas made a lot of money because for a pay them, like, I just take no grievance against it at all. You know, it's really it brilliant for boxing because we hate on UFC because yeah, thank the, you. the sport, both sports got was unbelievable. Um, I wanted to ask you, well, is there any up and coming fighters you've got your eye on? Anyone you, you think could come out of Belfast or come and you think could do something? Can make a name for themselves? Coming out of Belfast, we've got uh, Ian Phil coming on a prospect. We've got him on the belt yet, Sean McComb. Okay. Um, he's going to be a cracker. Fellow who's made a debut, or Dean McGivern. Mm-hmm. Um, our guy who just won my, won my knockout tonight. Should we find him taking the same part of a quarry? Lose Crocker. Um and Tom McKenna, Tom McCarthy, you know Tom McCarthy. There's like many boxers. There's many yeah. boxers and like Belfast boxing and like Irish boxing and is is massive. No, yeah. all all the very good amateurs are like turn pro very very early, and you know they're being kind of fast tracked, and it, it's just great to see us given like us as fans. Remember like about fifteen years ago, there was nowhere to go to for pro boxing in Ireland. Yeah. Shows all the time, but so, good. that's good then actually because when I look at boxing sometimes you, you see the big names but then, apart from that there everyone's uh, as you said and as Stephen said as well journeyman it's hard to actually get excited for boxing but I think you just need to obviously look into it a bit more we always laugh and say because everyone's like 30 and 0 in boxing I'm like there must be a guy it's like not in 200 <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean like who are these guys beating there is people who have like 5 and 150 and all it's ridiculous <laughs> But is it really worth it? Like, obviously, they're getting money, of course, but, like, for your prey, though. See them, see those journeymen? They'll probably be earning well more than a prospect because they're fighting every week mm-hmm. for a two and three grand. Yeah. I mean, is it like 12 and a month? Is that a mile on it? Absolutely. Can, we, yeah. can I do it, do you reckon? No, you definitely couldn't. <laughs> I can get beat straight away. Very on myself. <laughs> <laughs> You know what you think of it like so so Paddy, I say you're retired now, you say you're happy, your podcast is doing really well and I'm really enjoying it. Uh what's the future for yourself? Like what do you see yourself doing in five, ten years time? See it stick with the podcast, I I'm always gonna stick with the podcast. Um I thought about it and I I really want to do it and I will do it actually. Um sometime. If COVID messed it up on the plans. Yeah. Um open the gym. Oh nice. But 
you yourself for Belfast concerned. How many gyms? There's two many gyms. Every everyone has this a gym. room is becoming a gym. I think so. Know, yeah. <laughs> Some guy bought it. <laughs> my gym is going to be unique in the sense like there's going to be no weights, nothing. It's going to be like boxing bags. Mm-hmm. So you're going to come in and do like a four man circle on the bags, but like, me taking obviously, and you're running out. So it's boxing specific fitness. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing like weights and all that there, cup and all that, nothing like that there. So it's specifically boxing. Um, there is one in Belfast already, so I ain't at the Push him to the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bother me. The gymsies, I, I always say, Steve and I hate going to the gyms because you have all these meatheads who are lifting <laughs> obviously like about 150 kg and I'm like lifting like five. Yeah. You know what I mean? And all looking in the mirror, looking at themselves, and I'm just trying to get in, get out. And there's no, I don't know, I, I always want to go to a smaller, quieter gym, as you said, just for like fitness rather than for like your glory muscles. Yeah, I, I hate that too. I hate going to the gym and like do mates and like people look at you and like, Judging you. Not exactly, just I don't like it. Like, oh, weird. there's Paddy Barnes, he's only lifting 5k. I'll knock you out though. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, weightlifting's a, we- <laughs> <know. laughs> weight a weird thing, like, because it's like I, I, I love lifting weights, but you get to see people who are in unbelievable shape, right? But that's all they do. Can't move. It's like, right, so you're like, I get like you're a boxer, you're a UFC fighter, you're whatever, you're a fucking tennis player, you're in good shape. You do weights to supplement the sport that you're doing, mm-hmm. but some people just do weights. And I get like everyday people just to improve themselves and get better. You lift weights; it, it's a great thing to do. But if you're fucking six percent body fat, shredded out of your mind and on steroids just for the sake of being on steroids and being six percent body fat, you're doing something wrong. And you work in an office. And you work in an <laughs> office. Like, what? You work in an office. You're an accountant. Why? Why? Why have you got abs shining through your shirt? <laughs> That's that's late. That and it has to be. That's a lifestyle choice because mm-hmm. you can't be that shape unless you live that kind of life. So you're eating yeah, that's true. every day. Like, I I can never be like out there because like, I enjoy my life too much. I enjoy having takeaways or drinking every and also so that there life. That's just for me. But each your own. Like I'm not criticizing people that do it. I mean, you do whatever you want. But it's always been weird to me because I always went to the gym just casually, just to get in better shape, get fitter, get stronger. But then I just saw it's like anything, there's always an extreme to it. But I always think the extreme to weightlifting, the extreme to any training normally supplements a sport. But then the, now there's just a lot, everyone goes to the gym. Yeah. Everyone has an Instagram. Because so, everyone wants that bod, don't they? They want yeah. that, that one Instagram pic that gets like a hundred likes and they're like, fuck, I have made it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the, the bad thing. thing. But and we're, it's, it's all our faults because if we see a girl, who works out and how they get obviously weren't ne- fucking next looks hot basically what are you trying to say <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like we're gonna like that photo rather than like in some ways not like that so it's we're all we're all the blame aren't we <laughs> tell your missus you're on there like in them photos I don't know something maybe he missed later that's the better in my head the one I was going one. somewhere and I, I lost <laughs> track we can happily add this photo I got nervous I got nervous sorry I'll be in the next time <laughs> she never watches or listens to our podcast anyway nobody does no one does <laughs> <laughs> all right Paddy, don't say thank you so much for coming on the podcast it was great talking to you no problem at all anytime you are now listening to empty podcasting